Okay, I want to share with you two bits of uh, information, two concepts that I did pick up while I was uh, working, uh, showing my art pieces on the streets in New York City. Uh, and they came from two different sources, two different people, and the uh, funny thing is neither of these guys did I like, okay, but, and a lot of things they said were nonsense, but these two things did help greatly propel my, my efforts. Okay, the first one was uh, a man who used to mix paints. He made these very big canvases for the street, certainly. Uh, maybe uh, six or eight feet high by uh, ten feet across. And he explained that people in the city have big lofts and they have to fill the space, so all this brickwork and all. And they need something. So he would read the magazines early in the year as to what the colors of the season are going to be, which I don't know how true that is. But um, he would mix these different colors and um, create kind of like a mural, a mixture, okay, like a, a dark brown, a lighter brown, an off yellow, all combined. And what he explained to me is that there are three different styles or types, basic, general, of, of artwork, that to his knowledge, what he, he believes, from all that he's seen in the city, because I came out with this, this, this marker work that was quick, spontaneously made pieces, and, and that was it. And what he explained is that the, the first type is what, what you might consider a wallpaper. It's just colors mixed, and there's all types. It doesn't just have to be a mixture of colors, but it's basically there's nothing um, substantial that, that this normal suburban benight would, would deem um, um, artwork, okay? But it's also the easiest to sell, okay? Uh, people just, there's a demand all the time. The second type of artwork is the traditional, you know, painting, here it is. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, a motorcycle on a, a, a freeway in front of a load of, of, of greenery or an apple in a bowl on a table in front of a window that you look out and see some, 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 something behind the window. Okay, that's traditional painted artwork and, and uh, there's more or less a demand for that, but, but, but less of a demand than there is for the first one. But there are all types of artwork that fall into each of these two uh, um, concepts, so to speak, as to what artwork is. And the third one, according to him, is your own freehand, freely made thing that, um, like what I do, okay? It's just a spontaneously made thing, or not necessarily spontaneously made, but it's unique completely, as unique as, as theoretically possible to that particular artist. And that's the hardest to create a market for, or to find a market for, because there's no market. You create the work, nobody's ever seen anything like it before, maybe they talk about it, Maybe they, they, they see it again and it's, you know, interesting, but nobody says, hey, surely we got to have one of these for the living room, okay? It's not going to happen, but if you get it out there and you get enough of a market, eventually that can go the biggest because you're the only source for it and people understand that there's more to it because it emanated explicitly from yourself and uh, you have the market cornered okay like a Keith Haring had okay um, and, and other people who made made art you know um, spontaneously from the subconscious and got it to take now the second person who gave me a concept that kind of took with me and uh, a, a man I personally didn't like, he was very offensive all the time, but he said he was educated in art, he went to art school, which I believe, and he said, um, 
because I was getting a little discouraged and he said, listen, he said, any form of expression that's created consistently over a period of time and gotten out into a city, okay, that's put in tangible form, form of expression put into tangible form and gotten out into a city consistently will someday become collectible. And I said, ah, this is any form of expression, any music, any poetry, any artwork. And he said, yes. I said, I don't think so. He says, well, take your pieces. There's not a lot of interest here right now. He says, but supposing a hundred years from now, they find there are 500 pieces laying around the city behind closet doors, under beds, whatever. I said, well, a hundred years from now, and they find that many, and then they start seeing them in shops, yeah, they'll be collectible. He said, no question, right? I says, right, no question. He says, okay, so why not 50 years from now? I says, okay, I can buy that. And then he gets to like 20 years from now, if they're dated and signed, and there are certain things that go on 20 years from now in society that are different from today, these will be collectible pieces. And I realized if I create enough of my art pieces and I do get them out there consistently, someday they will become collectible.